Hey everybody and welcome to the first video in the series of seasons, how to and tips and tricks. Uh, so we're going to use Goldcrest Valley map. Uh, we got the Platinum Edition installed. Uh, so all of the starter maps on uh, on Farm Sim 17 are now seasons prepared and we'll explain what that means here in a little bit. Uh, but we're just going to go ahead and use Goldcrest Valley and uh, we're going to go in here and I've downloaded seasons right now we're currently at version 1.3 in the mod hub and then there are also five seasons geos that i've downloaded now you're not going to use all of these i've just downloaded them all so that they're all listed here uh, we're going to at some point show every single one of them and kind of talk about the differences uh, that are amongst them uh, but i wanted to just show them here first thing we're going to do is we're going to unselect them so that we don't have to worry about what they do to the base game. And we're just going to leave these things checked. We're going to go ahead and jump on in. So as we're loading up, you'll see that it's uh, got snow that we're loading up. See where it says we're loading seasons. So that's good. All right, so we've got the map ready to start. Let's go ahead and jump on in. And this is what you're gonna see for the very first time you ever load seasons. First thing you're gonna get is spring is here. Flowers and trees blossom. It's time to cultivate and sow your own fields. It's gonna hit okay. We've got a little uh, seasons info menu down there. And up in the upper corner, upper right corner, you can see that we have uh, the, what looks like a flower to me. Uh, maybe, I don't know what that icon is supposed to represent, but it kind of looks like a flower with uh, something coming out of the middle. That is telling you that you are in spring. Uh, we have an air temperature. The cloud is an air temperature of 32 degrees Fahrenheit. And the little plant icon is the ground temperature at 39 degrees Fahrenheit. Then you can see we have on schedule or on tap for a cloudy day today with sun following. See, we have 644 a.m. We're in day one, zero one of early spring. Now we're currently running at 5x speed. We're going to dial that back just for a moment to 1x, and we have $20,000. So that's, that's pretty standard. And if we go to the help menu and you toggle through here, you're going to see all this is pretty standard. And then you get to seasons. And there's a whole boatload of great information here uh, to reference while you're in the play. While you're in playing the game <clears throat> so i encourage you to go and check those out and look through those basically uh, you can see the weather is random from day to day um, and to that end on how i started this map with 30 some degree air and ground temp is not necessarily how you're going to start the map you may come in and it may be a lot colder maybe a lot warmer uh, maybe snowing it may be sunny it may be raining who knows how it's going to start it all kind of starts rather randomly so we're not going to walk through and read all of these uh, because quite frankly i take into account that you all can read and uh, you'll be checking this stuff out from time to time let's go ahead and jump back now alt s will bring up the seasons menu this is your uh, planting schedule if you will so right now it is at nine day seasons that's the default for the starting of seasons uh, and it's separate each season is separated out into three um, segments you have early mid and late then of course the entire game year is four seasons so there are 12 transitions per game year and that's going to be something very important to understand uh, at a later time <clears throat> over here we have all of our crops and we have our germination temperature okay so if it's white that means we can go ahead and plant and we don't have to worry about um, it being too cold if it's blue think of it that it's too cold so it's blue and therefore we can't 
uh, we probably shouldn't be planting these things this early. Uh, this chart uh, shows the planting time, and then the blue shows harvest time. Now we are in default seasons. Uh, we don't have any geos enabled, so this is basically default seasons weather. And you can see we can plant wheat, barley, canola as early as day one of spring all the way through the last day of spring. <clears throat> the same with potatoes and sugar beets and poplar and potatoes and sugar beets. Uh, sunflowers, though, we should not be, we can't plant that until mid spring. Regardless of what our ground temperature is, we can't plant that until mid spring. If we do, it's going to wither and die, so don't do it. And notice we only have six game days, or basically mid spring and late spring, to plant sunflowers. Soybeans and corn, we can't plant until late spring. Uh, and we can plant, although we can plant as far as the last day of early summer to get those in the ground. Oil seed radish, we can plant pretty much any time other than the first three days of spring. And we can pretty much harvest or well, plow under, cultivate under oil seed radish any time during the year. Poplar, we can plant pretty much all of spring, summer, and fall, assuming that we have the corresponding ground temperature, and we can harvest it all year round. So we can harvest poplar in the middle of the winter, should we so wish. Grass, we can plant all the way through to the end of early winter, uh, but we can only harvest grass from mid-spring to late autumn. So it's something very important to remember. And you'll see sugarcane doesn't have anything particular on this map. Uh, that's because the default season's weather does not al uh, have an allocation for sugarcane. Uh, the default season's weather is based on uh, some location in the UK. And in the UK, they don't do sugarcane. So if you want to do sugarcane, you're going to need to load up the uh, Paraguay Geo. And we'll get to that in another episode. If we toggle over to the second tab, second screen, this is the economy window. And this window is absolutely awesome. Uh, as you begin playing, like we are right here, this is the average that we could expect for wheat prices. See that we have a low here in the late summertime. And overall, on an average, wheat has a high in early midwinter. Okay. Now, as we go through and play, these will go up and down based on real life um, prices. So you'll see this chart change. But in general, you expect the best price of wheat to be around this time frame in winter. See how wheat and barley kind of follow each other. Nola. Sunflowers, on the other hand, is drastically different. Uh, right now is the best time to sell sunflowers. Worst time to sell sunflowers is her, here in early winter. Soybeans, on the other hand, is best time to sell is in late, early summer. Corn, very interesting. It has two peaks. Potatoes, kind of follows the same general wave as wheat and barley. Sugar beets. Sugarcane, we don't need to worry about it because we can't do it. Nor slurry, wool. You'll see the best time in theory to sell your wool. Now, I'm doing these videos on normal. I typically play on hard mode, but for this tutorial, I decided I would use the normal difficulty level. So you can see the best time to sell wool, interestingly enough, is early late spring. The earlier in the late spring transition. Worst time would be mid-autumn. The chips, wow, drastically the best time to sell wood chips is in the winter. Uh, maybe when people are maybe buying wood chips to burn, not really sure. Silage is flat across. Uh, silage does fluctuate, it's just right now um, Seasons doesn't know. Grass, now, we can't sell grass bales flat out with Seasons. Don't do grass bales. Only reason to bale grass is to make silage bales. You can't sell grass bales. You can't sell loose grass. See here, straw, bale. You can't sell loose straw. You can only sell baled straw. Hey, 
you can only sell baled hay. You can't sell loose bulk hay. See the cow prices? Now animal prices will fluctuate. See right here, early summer, early spring. 64.50 for one cow. Best time to buy your cows? Right here. Right at the transition to midsummer. Okay? Worst time to buy cows is basically almost right as soon as you start the game. Really, it's actually in late autumn or early winter, it looks like. Sheep are kind of on a different schedule. They kind of peak now when they're being productive, and then they tail off in price till mid-autumn. Pigs, they are all over the place. But look here. You want to buy pigs at a dirt cheap price? Right here, late autumn, is when you need to be getting your pigs. We have straw pellets and hay pellets. That's because we have the straw add-on in here. So as we play along, we're going to see this economy screen change to reflect the daily average price for each game day. And now let's go to the settings. We have season's introduction. That's what I read as soon as we popped into the map. Every time you transition to a new season, it will basically give you a little introduction into the season. You can turn that on or off. Keys in the help menu. Basically, let's go back out. Pull up the F1 menu. Basically, we can see Alt F for the forecast and Alt S for the menu. We can turn that off if we just go here. And now we don't have it. Okay, so we'll just turn it back on because it doesn't really matter to me. Temperature scale, Fahrenheit or Celsius. I like Fahrenheit. I don't understand Celsius, so I'm going to leave it on that. Now, season length. The default length is nine days. Uh, if you want to play three days, that's the shortest length you can play. And the longest length you can play is 24 days with this version of seasons. Basically, it's the day length has to be divisible by three uh, because you have three transitions. So if you play three day seasons, basically each game day is one seasonal transition. So day one is early spring, day two is mid spring, day three is late spring. Play six day seasons, then day one and two are early spring, day two and three, or three and four are mid spring, day five and six are late spring, okay? So three days per seasonal transition, four days, five days, six, seven, and the big daddy, 24 days, you have eight game days for every seasonal transition. So you have eight days of spring, eight days, or no, eight days of early spring, eight days of mid spring, eight days of late spring, and then you transition to summer after 24 game days. So that's kind of a fun way to play. I've played this way a few times. Uh, and there's several other people that I've conned into uh, trying a 24-day play. And uh, I think some people have quite enjoyed it quite a bit. Other people have found it to be quite a drag. Um, but uh, for this tutorial, we're going to do three days just so we can fly through things a little bit quicker. Um, I would really seriously not suggest three-day play for, for very many people. Um, because three days is actually far more difficult than something maybe the nine days or 12 days or even 15 day range. We're going to do three. <clears throat> snow mode is on or off. You can see snow mode or one layer are on. So it says snow will fall in cold winters and block roads. So if it's on and you have a map that is seasons prepared, then you can have multiple layers of snow. And as you get more layers of snow, it will be more and more difficult to drive around. Up to the point where it could become completely impossible to drive without first plowing um, your way through. If you turn it off, well, then you're not going to have snow at all. No accumulation. You might see it snow, but you're not going to see it accumulate. If you have it set to one layer only, um, if you're playing a season's prepared map, then you'll only get one layer of snow. And that will not really affect your driving. Uh, you'll still be able to get around, but you'll have the nice pretty snow on the ground. If you're playing a map that is not seasons prepared, then the most snow you can ever have is one layer at a time, even if you have it set to on. Now you'll notice snow tracks changes to off if I have snow mode off. 
It also has changes to off if I have one layer only. It's only enabled if I go to snow mode on. And that is because you only get snow tracks if you have multiple layers of snow. Um, snow tracks would be if you have two or more layers. When you drive, you basically see um, divots behind you of where you've driven. As the snow melts, then those divots will go away first. Um, so when you finally get down to a little bit of snow, you'll have areas that you've driven that are bare, and then areas where you haven't driven that are still covered in snow. Crop moisture is on or off. So if it is on, you can't harvest when you have a wet crop condition. If it is off, then it's uh, basically it follows the game ruling where you can't harvest while it's physically raining or for 30 game minutes after it's rained. If it's on, then you might not be able to harvest for six, seven, eight, or 12 hours after it's rained uh, based on what season you're in. We're gonna leave that on. We're gonna leave snow on, three day seasons, and we're gonna leave everything else the same. And now you can see our planting schedule is a little bit different. We now have one day per seasonal transition, uh, but our when we can plant is still uh, no different. Let's jump to 24 days and watch how this changes. So now we have one through eight, nine through 16, and 17 through 24. But again, we can still only plant what we can plant, we can plant it. Oh, and our economy shows every day. So now we have a lot more charts, uh, a lot more granularity. If we look at, let's say our animals, see how the prices fluctuate a lot more now than they did earlier. And if we jump to three days, see pretty big stair steps changing. So let's go ahead and back on out. So now that is basically uh, where we're going to leave it for the first episode or the first segment. Well, let's, let's do something else. We've talked about seasons prepared maps and non seasons prepared maps. So let's, let's talk about what's a seasons prepared map. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to pull up the developer console I'm going to get put in SS, SS add snow. We're going to add a few layers of snow. Now we'll wait a few seconds for the map to populate or for the snow to magically appear. And there we have snow. Got a couple layers now. If we run over here to our pickup truck in uh, drive, you'll see our snow tracks that we talked about. Oh, it disappeared. Let's put them back in. It disappeared because it is 39 degrees outside. Or 37 degrees outside. So it won't last long. So we'll need to do this. But you can see now the snow tracks. You can see how hard it is to drive around. I'm seriously spinning. So you wouldn't want to be trying to drive or pull a wagon or anything, or a trailer, uh, around and things like this. All right. Before it goes away, you'll see that our building here, there's no snow under the roof. Snow outside, but there's no snow under the roof. Over here, let's go take a look at this one. There's no snow under the roof. Snow out here, but there's no snow. We tab up to um, to this one. See up here again. It's no snow. So a seasoned prepared map has what's called a snow mask, and the map author would have placed the snow mask underneath things that have a roof. So things that should not get snow accumulation have a snow mask. There's no snow accumulation here. As far as seasons is concerned. This is under a roof, which conveniently, it is under a roof. Um, that will come into play with rain and hay bales and straw bales and what sort. So this area also seems to have had the snow mask applied to it. We won't have snow on our dump area. And we shouldn't have snow over here under this hay barn. There you go. We'll have snow inside. A little snow here. Drift come in. 
a little bit of a drift come in here but overall no snow in that area so for hay bales and straw bales uh, you need to leave your bales in the dry okay so if you bale up some hay and leave it outside and it rains it will start to rot your, your quantity of hay will um, start to deteriorate almost immediately it will keep deteriorating for as long as it rains then when it stops raining it will stop but if you leave it out for enough rains uh, it will wither away to nothing if you uh, put the hay under roof here then it will stay dry and it won't rot it won't go away over here as it rains snows uh, the same with straw put straw in a shed then you're good to go it's not going to rot if you leave straw outside and it rains it's going to start to rot and deteriorate uh, if you put hay in a trailer and leave the trailer uncovered then it will deteriorate in rain if you put the trailer under roof or you cover the trailer then it won't um, you won't have those problems now let's talk about grass. If you mow grass and bale it, in two game days, that grass bale will disappear on its own, regardless if it rains or not. Under no circumstance, really, should you be baling grass if you are using seasons, unless you also plan on following up the baling with wrapping the, hay, the grass bale into silage. Okay? So if you're kind of a player that likes to go around and cut a bunch of grass and bale up the grass and feed your cows grass bales and feed your sheep grass bales with seasons, don't do it because you're going to find within two game days all that grass that you bailed up has been is gone. Uh, one game day, the, quant the volume of the bale will basically be reduced by a half to 2,000 liters versus 4,000 liters. <clears throat> And on the subject of silage bales, uh, it's important to note that it, silage bales do not convert immediately. So in the base game, as soon as you wrap a bale, it is a silage bale. You can run it up to the sell point and sell it immediately. You can feed it to your cows, uh, put it in your mixer as silage immediately. Um, but with seasons, that is not the case. It will take one seasonal transition before your bale converts to silage. Let's pull this up. So with three day seasons, if we wrap a silage bale on the first day of summer in the morning, then it will become a, if we wrap a grass bale the first day of summer, it will become a silage bale on the second day of summer. Let's go to nine day season. About that guys so on nine day seasons if we wrap a grass bale on the first day of summer it will stay a grass bale until the fourth day of summer so we have to go through an entire transition if we you, you may think oh I can cheat this I can wrap a grass bale on the third day of summer and it will be a silage bale on the fourth day because we'll be moving from early summer to midsummer that is not the case it will become a silage bale on the sixth day of summer. Okay, so it is one seasonal transition time length from the time that you have wrapped the bale till when it becomes a silage bale. So planning is very important. You discover that you are out of silage bales um, and you go to wrap some up real quick. You're not going to have your silage bales for quite a while until you can manage to get them fermented. So with that, I'm going to go ahead and close out this version or this video, and I'll be back with another video, and we'll talk about the different geos.